Hey, YouTube fam, welcome back to the channel. I am Phil. Hey guys, I'm Sam. We are Bars and Barbells, and today we got Mickey Flanagan for the first time. We're coming to Mickey because we dropped a post asking you guys who your favorite comedian was, and on that post, how many comments did we get? Like 1,100 or something. Wild. So many suggestions. I'm low-key so excited because that means so many new comedians. Sam has really enjoyed her comedic ride thus far. Yeah, it's been amazing. So much fun. And this didn't, is like my favorite part. Didn't have an affinity for comedy, stand-up comedy to begin with. No, not really. I just had never really been exposed to much of it. And now she just giggles <laughs> in her chair like no tomorrow. <laughs> so hopefully Mickey's going to bring us some comedic laughs as well. Let's see what you got, Mickey. It's about relationships. And um, so with that said, I guess we should get into it. As usual, guys, thank you for the support. Really appreciate the likes, the comments, yes. the subscriptions. We've grown more than we thought was possible. So we wouldn't be here without you. And we Very truly true. are grateful for that. Thank so, you so much, guys. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's go. The um, modern men, I like modern men, they're all buff now, aren't they? They're all buffed and preened and clipped. Hi, just mm. <laughs> you girls are so lucky. No pubes, no pubes, <laughs> no one's got any pubes anymore. 80% of the population, no pubes. I should have shaved my beard. Lovely moment in a relationship when you look down the bed and you see. <laughs> it's so unifying, isn't it? You're suffering for them. Go on, babe, you can get it out. Go on. You want a glass of water? Be right. <coughs> Sounds like a cat with a hairball. It's only the luck of the draw, isn't it? Could be you. And you look up at her. One second. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Carry on, get excited. <laughs> <laughs> got it, I got it, babe. It's one of mine. Yeah. You young girls don't realize how lucky you are to have these lovely modern boyfriends, caring, understanding. <laughs> yeah, they, they'll be in the pub having a drink and suddenly they say, look, I have to go. I have to go. My partner's menstruating. <laughs> yeah, right. The least I can do is be there with her during this dark, dark time. I've told her it's not her period, it's our period. <laughs> okay, share it with me, sister. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I keep her supplied with paracetamol and hot water bottles. <laughs> She's allowed to verbally abuse me whenever she likes. You can punch me on the back of the head if that helps out. <laughs> as long as I'm there with her. <laughs> and as I come in, my wife comes to the door, she goes... So what are your thoughts on that part, Samantha? Are you ready for it to be our period? <laughs> I think unwittingly it already is. Unknowingly, I should say, to you it already is. <laughs> I don't think I ever verbally abuse you, punch you in the back of the head, or force you You to... might use a heating pad, though. Yeah, <laughs> but you don't deliver it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted, guys. Delivery on the next month. Yeah, it's funny, though. Yeah, I think it's um, at least somewhat accurate. We'll put it that way. I have to leave the bar. My girlfriend's menstruating. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know very many guys who would do that. No, I, don't, I wouldn't say that I've ever encountered that. I wouldn't expect that. somebody to do that. So. Thank goodness for me. <laughs> Goes, don't come in here. Somebody's crying. And I say, fine enough, babe. I was going to give it a miss. <laughs> And I go to bed. It's got nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. And I say no more of it. It's her night. Yet if I go out for the evening, my wife is deeply interested <laughs> in every single detail. It starts in the afternoon. <laughs> she starts following me about. <laughs> so where are you going tonight? <laughs> I, say, 
detail that I have not decided yet. <laughs> what if you can't get in? <laughs> what, the pub? <laughs> you could be able to get in the pub to drink lager. Lager. Who's coming along? I don't know. No one's really confirmed yet. Oh. Oh, babe. It <laughs> sounds like a disaster. <laughs> I say, look, I'm not worried about it. Don't you worry about it, really, it's fine. And as I leave, she says, say hello to everybody for me. <laughs> Can I tell you here and there, girls, we never say hello for you, all right? <laughs> So my mind was fairly empty. This thought came into my mind. I don't know where it came from. It came from nowhere. It went, have a year off, Mickey. I thought, yeah, I'm going to have a year off. I'm caked up. I'm a celebrity. I can do what I fucking like. <laughs> this is a great idea. I've now got to convince my wife this is a good idea. Part of the reason our 17-year relationship has survived is because I've only been at home for about three weeks. Because <laughs> like most men, I tend to irritate her just by being there. Because I can't get fuck all right. Yeah, go on, sisters, get it out your system. We do our best. Now. Nah. If I don't talk to her for a couple of days, she don't like it. She takes it personal. And I can feel it brewing. As I come in the house, I think, oh, she's going to want to talk. <laughs> she says to me, come and sit by the island and tell me a story. She says, you must have a story for me. As if I'm an endless supply of stories. Like a lot of men, I used all my stories up years ago. <laughs> I've kept a few back for holidays. Because they're torture, aren't they? they told you, 14 nights staring at each other. <laughs> All out and burnt. <laughs> what do you mean, what have I been up to? I've been with you! <laughs> you start talking ab... So, I mean, uh, I think, like, the first half that we heard, I would say was agreeable for the relationship component. Yeah. In some respects. So in reference to my friends, you know, I'm definitely, if you're saying, say hello to so-and-so, I'm not running out and saying, hello, Samantha says hello, hopefully you guys are doing well, <laughs> and that is accurate. Fair. However, I would say the latter portion here, and you can let me know if this is true or not, I don't think I really get under your skin all that much, and putting her on the spot at this point... <laughs> I'm like, mm. and you know where, because we're together a lot, a lot. I'd say more than the average couple for sure. And this isn't my choice, guys. Like I'm not saying I force her to be around me all the time, um, but in respect of that, maybe it's because he said 17 years. Yeah. So we haven't been together that long, but maybe this is what we have to look forward to. <laughs> if we're together that long, in the then future. it will be. Um, at each other's throats and you'll only want to see me three weeks out of the 17 years. Well, I mean, that's a very low percentage of your relationship. Yeah, 0.01% maybe. Yeah, I don't know about that. But. No? So that's what I'm saying. I, I would say so far, half and half. It's yeah. Been half yeah. accurate of the relationship dynamic, half not so accurate in our relationship dynamic. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think that there's kind of this stigma around that, you know, and I think it's for, like you said, like married couples who've been together forever and blah, 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 you know, like 15, 20, 30, whatever years that there's kind of this idea that, you know, the woman just kind of runs the show and the man's just like yeah whatever whatever keeps my wife happy right I feel like that's kind of like this like just idea that's out there about married couples yeah. and you know I mean happy wife happy life exactly is the same, right I believe. so I mean who knows yeah but well let's find out what else I, I feel gonna... like that's kind of how it is with my parents like my dad's just like yeah yeah do whatever you want so. you just get worn down so Basically. much like Bill Burr's <laughs> talked about they just wear you down yeah. and you're just like <laughs> You get to the end on your deathbed. Yeah, my mom's definitely the boss. <laughs> All right, let's see what else he's going to add. Absolute nonsense to each other, don't you? You just say anything. I think my flip-flops are breaking, babe. 
When we turned up, they were flipping and flopping. <laughs> One of them's flapping a little bit now. <laughs> flapping. You see other couples, don't you? And you just look at them. Come over here. <laughs> Save us. Just come over. <laughs> Help. <laughs> she looked at me in a moment of terrible desperation. On the last holiday, she said, um, I saw a three-legged dog in the village earlier. <laughs> I said, babe, I don't know where we go with this. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I could normally find something, but I don't know where we go with a three-legged dog, <laughs> you know. I think just to your point before that, you know, he's saying that they don't spend a lot of time together. So then when they do go on vacation, it's almost like they don't really know how to spend time together. So it's like awkward. Right, yeah. Whereas I feel like for us, because we spend so much time together, we can go on vacation and like we don't really have that problem. It's the same old, right? Yeah. yeah. So I feel like that's probably part of the problem. Like they don't spend enough time together. So then when they do, they're like, well, what do we even talk about? I mean, it's relatable probably for a lot of people, but especially for him because he's on the road so yes. much, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, that's all I'm just saying. <laughs> His and I did get my year funny, off. Though. And what a fantastic year off I had. It was so nice being at home, getting to make decisions with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, isn't it, when you're talking to your wife, going, yeah, well, we could do this, and we could do that, we could do this, and we could do that, and part of you're thinking, why the fuck are we having this conversation? <laughs> We're going to do what you want to do. <laughs> we all know it. Often my wife will make a decision with no consultation. She just does it. She came in about a year ago. She said, by the way, we're going camping next year. I said, oh, fuck off, will ya? <laughs> sort of a moron goes camping. <laughs> Apparently, the lower middle classes again. Yeah. Yeah, let's go and live like refugees for a week. That'll be fun. <laughs> my thoughts exactly. I hate camping. It's all about upsetting your partner. Because you know what you've got to do now. You've got to become creepy, crawly husband. Walking around the house. Tiny, little, creepy, crawly husband. Don't do anything to upset her. I put the football on. No, I'm not putting the football on. I don't like the sound of that. It's starting to get smaller and quieter and tidier. Mm. You start doing shit you don't normally do. <laughs> I've emptied the dryer for you, babe. <laughs> oh, I meant for us, sorry, I meant for us. I don't know what I was thinking there. There's no separate spheres in this house, sister. Just a circle of equality. <laughs> if you do this for long enough, she comes back. She parks the boat up, she comes back, and you go, thank God. Now I can work on her a bit more. Maybe we'll be back to normal in about two or three days, two or three years. <laughs> much quicker turnaround with me. Much quicker turnaround with me. My wife has a penchant, a penchant for shrinking my T-shirts. <laughs> and I'm by quality now, proper quality. Fruit of the loom. <laughs> if you got it, flaunt it. I'm going to tell you Fruit of the loom. 12, 14, 15 quid, let's have it. <laughs> I get two wears out of it. Suddenly I go to the dryer, there's a crop top. <laughs> oh, there we go. I go and I say, babe, look, another one. Two wears I've had out of this. She says, well, you could do the washing yourself, couldn't you? I say, that's what I'm, I'm not here to argue about that. I got the right ump the other day, a nice t-shirt, shrunk. I said, I said, I tell you what, babe, it's unacceptable. And as I walked away, she went, ooh, unacceptable, is it? I went in the front room, I slammed the door. I pushed it quite hard, right? <laughs> me and the dog are watching Flog It, right? We're watching Flog It, me and the dog. She likes Flog It. She knew she'd upset me. She knew! She knew! The door came open. A little face come round the door. She said, do you want a wank? What's the point in arguing, baby? Where does it... Really, where does it get you? Tell me, really, where does it get you? It's old-fashioned, mate. Nobody argues anymore. Everyone talks things through. (coughs) 
I'm getting a wank, the dog's getting a tummy rub. Everybody wins. We're back together. Back together. Are you at or were you at? Oh, goodness. Well, I mean, um, I would definitely agree I'm not a fan of camping. <laughs> yeah, not for me. Well, that's the point. We agree on that. So I can do cabins. I just can't do like tents and stuff. Yeah, I just, you know, I don't like living like a refugee. Like you said. <laughs> <laughs> it's like depriving yourself. I mean, I like the, I like nature. Me I too. like the elements and stuff. But I would I say. I like sleeping on the ground with bugs. <laughs> bugs. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would say, you know, we paused it midway there and we were talking about how maybe it doesn't apply to our relationship. And I think I would agree with that sentiment a little bit more. Um, but maybe like we did Patrice O'Neill, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. Right. And I can't on remember. Relationships. Yeah. I was on relationships. I can't remember what the title was, but that seemed to be much more truthful and representative of our dynamic. <laughs> yeah. We'll say, I mean like you're, he was saying like you alluded to, in a lot of these relationships that the women are the boss type thing. Yeah. Right. And we'll make like the decisions. I get what I want type thing. Yeah. And things are going to go my way or the highway. And maybe like you were saying, that's, you know, an older generation's perspective. I think for our, our dynamic, you know, you are much more indecisive. Right. <laughs> yes. So I'll, t I'll have to be the one to say like, for example, if we're going to go do something, I'll probably make that decision yeah. between the two of us. I, I get mean, given options. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I have such a problem making a decision. Decision, I'll be like, let's narrow it down to three, and then you can pick. Yeah, and um, I would say, like, I don't know. I, I, in my experience, you know, around my age, anyways, I would say that's more normal for like the male female dynamic that yeah. I've experienced. Um, you know, not even in relationships, just even outside of relationships, that tends to be like, I don't know, like maybe we could do this, maybe we could do that. And, yeah. you know, men are a little more like, well, let's just do this. Yeah. And so I would say that representation was not as fitting, but I did really like his uh, impressions. Like he does, he does a great job of like switching from character to character, yes. his facial expressions. Um, and I like the fact that he's using more of a relatable topic. Sometimes comedic sketches or stand up will have like, you know, a topic that is random, you know, it's just off the cuff yeah. and it's just sometimes a little silly yeah for this i like that it was relatable to yeah, well, people like relationships it's like almost everybody can relate to that to some degree in some degree yeah. right yeah for sure and i thought he did a good job like you said of just keeping it like fun and light and you know like relatable to some aspect and um you know i think even that part there at the end like i was kind of laughing because you know he was not that you know it was a situation where we really relate in the sense of like me being mad for weeks and the having to come crawling back and stuff like that. But I feel like it is funny because I feel like women, you know, and we had a discussion about this last night, which is ironic, but how like women are more emotionally driven and mm -hmm. men are more physically driven. Right. Right. So like the response of like getting over an issue is like, you know, the, the guy coming back to show like, I'm sorry. Whereas for her, she's just like, want to wank and he's like oh, I'm, I'm over it i'm over it right so i yeah. think that again just kind of highlights the male masculine feminine kind of dynamic yeah that is, well. that was definitely accurate yeah you know, of <laughs> how can you come to a resolution for different parties and yes. different uh resolutions are going to be the way to go about it right yeah. so um I, I you know it was, it was a good introduction to mickey flanagan i don't know if this is representative yeah. of his comedic stand-up as a whole uh if it's he does similar stuff to this if you want us to check out more from mickey let us know in those comments if this is one of his best one of your favorite if it's not uh if you agreed with certain things disagreed with us on certain things yeah. where your you know age demographic may yeah, fall let us into know how you relate to this yeah we always appreciate the insights from our subscribers that's how we learn that's how we grow and we've had a great time thus far doing that so as we said in the beginning, if you want to jump on this ride with us and take a, take part in the comedy, sports, and music that we drop every single day, well, not all of them, but that's our mix of content, then we'd love to have you as a part of our community. And if that's the case, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you then.